Donovan Mitchell is as polarizing of an NBA player as they come. Last season, he set the record for the most points scored in an NBA game for an active player with 71. Now, yes, Damian Lillard did tie this a few months later. Regardless, this season, he's averaging 29 points and is floating around the top five in points per game for the NBA, actually leading the NBA in points per game after the first week. But what if I told you all of this is starting to pose a problem? What if I told you we might have a Donovan Mitchell problem? It seems like a long time ago that one short year ago, Donovan was traded to the Cavs from the Jazz for a rather large package in return, if you don't remember. A stacked package containing Larry Markkinen, Ochai Abaji, Colin Sexton, three unprotected first round picks, and two pick swaps. A haul worthy of a superstar, a haul worthy of a number one option. Some would argue that this was more or as much as the Suns offered for Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, with the Mavs offered for Kyrie Irving. Nonetheless, the Cavs paid a lot to get Darius Garland and the Cavs some backcourt consistency and help. However, what if I told you this is where the issue starts? Prior to this trade, the Cleveland Cavaliers were seeing success. It was minor success, but success nonetheless. A lot of people forget that they were well on their way into making the playoffs that 2021 season before Darius, Mobley, and Jared Allen all got hurt. I believe Ricky Rubio and Kevin Love were Ricky Rubio tore his ACL that season, so I know he was hurt. They all got hurt and missed games leading into the play-in where Kyrie Irving and the Nets absolutely smoked them. If you guys don't remember, Kyrie was 14 for 14 at the half. He hit that crazy buzzer beater in the corner at halftime to just kind of let them know, hey, look, we're making the playoffs. You guys aren't. No hard feelings. Um, that was the end of their season. The Cavs, the front office, they decided they've seen enough and enough was enough and it's time to make a trade to make them a contender. So they sold out on the big man roster and the ideology of having Laurie and all those other guys on the team as well as the draft capital and they went and called up Danny Ainge in Utah and acquired Donovan Mitchell. Upon acquiring Donovan, the Cavs defensive rating and rebounding has decreased. We saw and now see a Dame and CJ type dynamic of an undersized backcourt with two negative defenders. I feel like I always say this when I'm making recaps on the Cavs. I'm very just interested why Donovan Mitchell doesn't give the effort he did at Louisville. It could be an issue of hunger and settlement now that he's got his money and he's the number one option on a playoff team. Um, but we just don't see that tenacity in the NBA. There's moments where he looks like he's harping on ball matchups and he's making it personal, but that's not something I see 82 out of the 82 games. And it's definitely not something I saw in the playoffs last year. But I guess, like I said, when he's out there being the number one option, trying to get 30 every night, he may not have the energy for that. Nonetheless, the idea of two undersized guards trying to win a championship is bad enough. However, not only is that an issue, you stunted the growth, and I mean stunted big time the growth of Evan Mobley and Darius Garland. Evan has raised a high amount of praise from not just Cavs fans. It's pretty universal that he does have the potential on offense and defense to be something amazing. It at least an all-star floor yet here we are trading for a dominant ball handling carrying shot chucking guard like Donovan Mitchell causing little to no actions from JB Beckerstaff and the rest of the coaching division to be drawn up or called for Evan Mobley we barely barely see him getting involved in his own actions if he's getting the ball it's in actions run through Garland or Mitchell and they're running some sort of pick and roll or they're barely trying to set him up on the block they never really let him go to work and I understand he's skinny and a little bit you know undersized it still needs to get into that NBA frame but it's really hard to do this when you have Donovan who's taking 30 shots a night the effect this trade has had on Darius is pretty interesting as well you can see that he was an all NBA caliber player an all-star player prior to the Donovan trade and now he's just kind of turned into a facilitator who only runs the pick and roll with Allen and he sometimes hunts three-point shots when you see him want to you know try to get into that 20 point range but obviously Darius is a wonderful NBA player and I'm not saying he's bad because of Donovan but I'm I am saying that the productivity it's definitely leaned more towards the facilitation side while Donovan tries to tackle the scoring output and this is not me trying to bash Donovan Mitchell do not get it mixed up he will win you regular season games we have seen that time and time again not only here but with Quinn Snyder in Utah Utah was always the one through three seed they won 60 games or 55 plus games on multiple occasions however what happened in 
them last year is really where the problem comes. They had home court against the injured Knicks. Randall barely was even at 30 to 50%. And he shot, like, I want to say he shot, like, a combined 10 to 20 percent on that entire series and they got gentlemen swept by an inefficient Knicks team led by uh, Julius Randle, RJ Barrett and Jalen Brunson just very, a lot of Cavs fans and pretty much everyone picked the Cavs I'm pretty sure I picked the Cavs to win that series in seven games and they lost in five and one of the final issues I have with the system is that when Donovan Mitchell is hurt or isn't playing like we see right now they go out and they get a huge win over the Denver Nuggets obviously Denver doesn't have Jamal Murray right now but the one thing I didn't like when I was watching that game is there is little to no actions they have for Evan Mobley or Darius Garland because everything is so in tune around Donovan. They all looked a little bit scared to you know, take the torch knowing he's gonna return in a few games. It kind of reminds me of what I see with Jaron Jackson Jr. in Memphis. Uh, Jaron has shown the potential to lead an offense and put 30 up, but he plays somewhat antsy when Ja isn't around sometimes because he knows that if he gets into this groove, it's gonna feel extra weird when Ja comes back just to take it from him. Another thing I want to point your guys' direction to is the last 10 champions. If you take a look at them, you'll notice a pattern in their guards or best players. It's not undersized in the backcourt, and the backcourt is more than capable of defending. The Denver Nuggets obviously had Jamal and KCP, who Jamal, you could say, is a little undersized and isn't a great defender, but KCP more than makes up for that. The Warriors had Klay Thompson and Andrew Wiggins, and Steph Curry was a very underrated that season. Not a lot of people give him credit, but Andrew Wiggins was clamping up, putting literally belt locks on Jason Tatum in that series. The Bucks had Drew Holiday. They had Wesley Matthews, a lot of great Chris Middleton, a lot of great backcourt defenders. The Lakers, they had Rondo. They had Caruso. They had KCP, a lot of great defenders. The Raptors, they had Kawhi. Leonard they had Kyle Lowry they had a lot of great defenders Danny Green and other great defenders the Warriors teams and those Cavs teams they had great defenders even if you go back to the Spurs and the Miami Heat Tony Parker Manu Ginobili Dwayne Wade Mario Chalmers all these guys are great on ball defenders obviously LeBron at his peak it from 13 to 18 it's funny he was in you know those five straight finals he was a great defender guys teams that have defenders in the backcourt win championships and the Cavs just don't have that they have a shot chucking shooting guard who is very very undersized in today's NBA seeing as uh, you know big men and oversized guards are the ones that are kind of the future I mean you look at the Lamella balls and the Cade Cunningham's and then now we're having you know Chet Holmgren and Victor Wembanyama. the league is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and a small king and a short king can only do so much but what do you guys think can the Cavs win a championship if Mitchell's the best player on their roster can Donovan win a championship anywhere if he's the number one option let me know in the comments below again this video isn't me trying to bash Donovan I do enjoy watching him play and he's very explosive I just don't think he's the number one guy on a winning team. Uh, thanks for watching. If you made it this far, I appreciate your support as always. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Stay happy, healthy, and blessed. Peace.